Brahma Jeep. That is so sick, guys. Oh, it's a little bigger one. Oh, it's pulling drag, whatever it is. I, I don't know what an HD is, but I got 80 of them, that's for sure. Right now. What is up guys and girls, it's your boy The Hunter Fisher. Welcome back to the Epi Banger video. And today guys and girls, I'm doing a quick on the water review of the Jenko Double Down. Now, if you guys have seen a lot of my most recent videos, this has just been a common topic talking about the new Jenko Double Down. I wanted to give this rod the coverage that it deserves because it's an American industry rod and you don't need to go overseas to buy it. So if you're somebody who wants to get into BFS but you do not wanna buy things from overseas, because I understand that a lot of people want to source their stuff from here in the United States just because they trust it more. It's easier for warranty, it's easier for shipping, it's easier for a lot of different reasons and you can trust a little bit more. So that's why I really push this rod because people have had a hard time trusting JDM travel expenses, all those things like that. Sorry about that guys, uh, someone walked by so I didn't want to look weird with the camera talking in my face, but essentially. Uh, this rod, I, the reason why I've been supporting it so hard is because it's a U.S. rod. And I think that there needs to be a lot more U.S. rods in the industry. I mean, you have rods like the Dobbins, the old 18 rods. Uh, you also have other rods that are supposed to come out like the Cashin. Oh, a well, Cashin already came out, my bad. But those rods are all almost 200 plus after shipping. So at the end of the day, these rods get pricey. So at $140, you're paying for shipping and everything that comes with the Janko rod. And you're looking at the, the cheapest BFS rod in the United States if you're not considering rods from Bass Pro Shops, BFS rods, which that is a discussion I will have to get in later on because these rods that Bass Pro has, they're a little bit more of a different aspect. But with that said, my, the Janko rod has been one of my favorite rods to use lately because it just gets the job done. It casts all the way down to an 80th and I'm honestly surprised that it even does that just because those ratings you get skeptical about so before when i've been testing a lot of this rod i've been using the surinoya dark wolf ultra so if you're a budget guy and you want to keep that real purchase under 100 bucks it's 97.99 i actually said it was 95.99 in one of my last videos but this reel that i've been using lately is the surinoya dark wolf ultra and it's 97.99 on bait finesse empire right now that's a great reel if you're wanting to get into the game but you don't want to buy a zephyr because i can tell you for sure that the zephyr is kind of it's a great reel to start out with if you're really wanting to stay as cheap as possible. But the Zephyr, in my honest opinion, is not as good as the Surinoya Dark Wolf Ultra. The Surinoya Dark Wolf Ultra just casts lighter, performs better. I'm always going to recommend that first. So with that said, what I've got tied on right now is a 1 16th ounce EPF swim with a soft lock tungsten jig head right now from Eurotackle on the Janko rod. I'm going to be testing a variation of lures as much as I can at a public pond here today. I honestly don't catch, plan on catching any fish, but we're going to give it the old good old country try and we're going to see if that can change here today. So I'm going to get my rod. I'm going to put the GoPro on my hat and uh, we're going to see what we can do. Also, guys, um, if you really are ready for a bunch more content to come, come out, what I'm going to be trying to do here soon is I'm going to be trying to pump out a lot of more content. When I say a lot, I'm going to be attempting dailies. Like, I mean, I'm going to try pumping out a video every single day except Sunday because that is the Lord's day. You need to take a rest when you're on Sundays. That is the Sabbath. That's just part of it. But the point is, I'm going to see if I can pump out videos every dang day. And that's going to be tough. So I really need your guys' support right now. Go watch my videos. Go share them with everyone that you can. It's going to help me out a ton because right now, guys, I still don't have a job. I'm still waiting to hear back about job stuff, which is okay. I'm still doing the work that's necessary for that. But while I'm out here, I might as well make use of myself. Go do what I can with what I have right now. And what I have right now is you guys. So do me a favor. Go support me. But let's get into the video and stop talking. I'll see you guys out on the water. All right, guys, what I've got tied on is a little 16th ounce tungsten jig. We got just some bluegill bass out here that I like to go fish for because they're fun. Launch is a 16th ounce, I can tell you that, guys, for sure. Oh, there's some big bluegill out here right now. Guys, that's gotta be 40 yards right there. Ooh, these are nice bass right here. I don't know if you guys can see that in the water right there, but there's two nice bass. Really thick bass too. I keep having stuff flash on it. Let's 
see here this is a public park named Tom Brown guys I really don't know if that this is really a good spot to fish because I've been here a few times I've caught a lot of brim species a lot of smaller species had a really good day the other day out here when I was casting an 80th ounce jig around a lot of fun caught a few fish that was for sure and I think that we're definitely gonna be testing that out here today but I just wanted to show you guys the castability on just a 1 16th ounce weight. I can measure this guys and later and show you what it weighs, but this only weighs, I think it actually tells you on the head. One sec. 1.8 grams plus the plastic. It's probably around 2.2, 2.3 grams. If I had to guess, but my brake settings are on four with the Daiwa Alpha Sarah. I'm using six pound braid with some liter and no upgrades to the Alpha Sarah it launches like 40 feet it's pretty crazy and it is one of my most favorite combos right now especially for little freshwater areas i've been fishing having a ton of fun at right now y'all we are gonna be testing a little 1 80th ounce mule jig uh, with the donkey tail junior cut down on it this is about roughly 0.68 to 75 grams so this is a sub gram sub one gram lure there's not many American market rods that can do a sub one gram rod comfortably. So we're going to find out if this is possible. We are going to do this. Okay, I am now the dingus who can't figure out the line around his rod. Okay, here we go. Figured it out. And now what we're going to do is just cast. That's not very far. That's about barely 10 feet. So we're just going to work with that for now. But I actually have my brakes not very set up for this. Plus, if you guys really want to upgrade your reels to cast sub one gram lures a lot better than I just did. It's actually not very hard to do. You just have to find a different spool, get different bearings that spin easier, things like that. But I'm going to be using this today. And what we do is I literally just let it dead stick. That's what the best thing you can do with the donkey tails and the meal jigs. It's really just dead sticking in my opinion is the best way to fish these things. And I think that this 1 80th ounce here has worked really well in the past because it's like a really natural fall. Plus I use this color, works really well. Oh, too much breaks. Oh, baby turtle, just hit a baby turtle. <laughs> Real question is, well, are we gonna get bit today? I probably, I, I have a good feeling we're not going to get a fish today. I'm hoping, that I'm, I'm gonna try my best, guys. I'm going to put a fish on camera for y'all, hopefully. <laughs> and let's see where that goes. We've got tons of fish swimming around, more fish than normal out here. Oh, there's a tree. There's a tree stump here in the water right here that should actually help out a ton with structure wise giving the fish something to correlate to usually i can get a couple of micro boys to bite but the micro boys are not out today apparently oh something just popped right there don't scare the bejesus see there's an overhand cast didn't over break it too bad that's good I mean, underbreak it. That's what I'm really worried about is underbreaking it. But yeah, guys, I've also noticed with this rod, a lot of people have questioned the grip. It, it's that Gulf wind style tacky feel. So whenever it gets wet, it's still sticky. Um, a lot of people don't like that for some reason. I do not know why, because I absolutely love one, the look of the rod looks awesome. And two, the rod itself feels a lot more comfortable with this feeling, because I actually use the butt end of the rod like this, especially when I'm casting lighter weights, and it helps me get a little extra umph behind the rod, like so. And it gets me a little more distance. But point is, is this grip feels great. So I, if anyone's been skeptical about it, it feels great so far, don't worry about it. So we're gonna find out here soon. There we go, that's a little bit better casting right there. That's not bad at all. This rod was tested with a lot of different reels to actually see essentially Oh, I just had a fish, guys. Oh, man, that sucks. Oh, can't recast on it because I'm not used to casting an 80th ounce. There we go, better. So I'm getting a little bit more flick behind my cast so I can get better distance. So that's one thing I've noticed with this rod is I can flick harder and if I have my reel set up correctly, I can still cast an 80th ounce pretty easily. And a lot of guys, that's that's the reason why I've started out measuring an 80th to see, to show you guys like you can cast an 80th if you really wanted to. And in my honest opinion, you're not going to cast an 80th any better than this unless you're using an actual fly rod. <laughs> like this is 
light, dude. Like you, you, you're practically fly, fly fishing with this. And at the end of the day, you've got to be understanding that even spinning gear cannot cast this light unless you have a spinning rod that's literally rated down to a third of a gram, which the only rod that I can think of, there's only two or three rods I can think of that can do that right now. I think that maybe the, there's a Teton, Kuying Teton that can do that. Uh, and then there's a couple other rods that can to uh, do that as well. So yeah, but for this to be casting an 80th that far, that's getting close to 30 something feet now. So that is definitely impressive for a rod that's made in America to do that. It's just, we're not catching any fish right now, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I'm just gonna take that off. Um, we tried the 80th just because it's pressured and it's hot. Um, plus I wanted to show you guys that this rod could actually cast an 80th of an ounce. So I proved that little, I debunked that myth that this rod was improperly rated. Because, I mean, you, it's just unbelievable. Some, believe, some people just, it's crazy. They don't believe anything you say, no matter what you do. <laughs> but I just proved it. So if anyone has an issue with what I just proved, You've been proven wrong. This rod can cast an 80th of an ounce. So we've casted uh, sub one gram, we've casted an 80th of an ounce, so to say. We've also casted a two gram lure, otherwise known as a 16th of an ounce. We have a 32nd ounce right here, which I don't think that's gonna work right now. So I honestly don't wanna cast it. Um, let's see what else we got in here. All right, guys, we just tied on a different lure. This is the Janko Shinobi Shad. Weighs a quarter of an ounce, so that's about seven grams. So we've jumped up from sub one gram to all the way up to seven grams. We went from an 80th of an ounce to a quarter, which is two eighty seven of an ounce, which is 20 times the weight. We've gone to 20 times the weight. So we're gonna test that and see how it performs. I can already tell you that this is going to cast a lot further than what we've been casting so far. So we're going to pump them brakes Actually, those brakes are too high. But this is a spy bait. Um, it's really meant for suspended fish that are picky. Um, it's a lot easier to gauge depth with the spy bait, but this isn't a deep lake, so maybe this is kind of pointless, but we're going to test it out anyways. This thing's got like a wiggle in the water. I don't know if you guys can see that lure, but it's have like a, it has a wiggle as it falls. That's pretty cool. But we're going to cast it this way, where it's a lot deeper. That's getting easily 40 yard cast, so that's nice. We're gonna let it sink a little bit because spy baits are meant to gauge depth and sink. I've never used spy baits enough because I just don't know how to use them, honestly. But we're gonna go around the pond and honestly try this because this quarter ounce is a little bit more comfortable. I'm always wanting to get better at top water, not top water, so hard baits. So I don't mind trying this out right now. But you've gotta fish it slow. You guys can see how slow I'm moving my, oh, that's a turtle. Oh, that turtle almost got my lure. Hacking turtles. Oh, fish just hit all the way over there on the other side of the pond. We're gonna count to three. One, two, three. And then we start reeling. All right, guys. Walk to the other side of the pond. Just because uh, I've seen some people catch fish over here before. Boom. I could actually probably go a notch down on my brakes and still be able to handle that. So we let it sink. I probably should be using a spy bait with fluorocarbon, but I don't feel like retying an FG knot, so heck with that. But we are just slow rolling because the spy bait is just a finesse bait. It's really finessey. But in a way, I wonder if it acts like a chatter bait. I don't know much about the spy bait, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I literally don't know next to anything. <laughs> I know pretty much nothing except that this is a smaller. Oh, never mind. Guess I'm retying now. <laughs> Dang, it broke mid spool. That's a goof, guys. E even even people like me goof sometimes. See, that's guys. If you were considering trying J braid, I'm not gonna lie, I do not like it. It's it's honestly pretty bad. <laughs> like this J braid, it only lasted a month before it started doing this, and it's been absolute junk to just really deal with this crap repeatedly. So now I've got to figure out this knot, get it out for you guys, and get back to casting. I actually think I could probably still get that lure back because it's floating right now, I think. No, it's not floating. It's sinking. Yeah, it's sinking. That sucks. All right, guys, we have tied on a new lure. We're using a 3 64 ounce 
jig from Jackson Quan. I don't know exactly the weight off the top of my head right now, and I don't know the conversions, but this is a good little bass finesse jig, I think, that is available at Bay Finesse Empire. I'm using some six pound fluorocarbon, some uh, some Veritas light game, which is actually meant for salt water. I have it for salt water, but I'm gonna test this out anyways. But essentially that is what I'm gonna be casting now. So it's about a three gram, four gram lure. I'm being light with it so I don't snap it off. <laughs> But we're gonna fish that, see if it works, and uh, maybe hopefully I don't lose it one of these. I also have like five of these too, so that's not bad. I actually love these jigs so much because I've never found jigs this light before. So say if you're somebody who's up north, you wanna fish for smallies and creeks, this is the perfect jig for you. Like, I just think it's an absolutely great jig. I've never caught smallies, but I see a lot of videos and I've really wanted to try it. But this jig, I mean, you can you don't have to put the Jackson Crowley. So the trailer is also a Jackson uh, bait. Um, but it, uh, there's something on me. Oh, oh, I got something. Oh, I had something. No freaking way. And it's perfect for flipping back out there. Oh yeah, very nice. Oh my God, I had something. So the claws on this uh, trailer actually force the bait to float and stand up. If you notice, it falls and points directly up every time you cast it. Or not every time you cast it, but every time you jig it. So that was really cool. I almost had a fish. Oh, there is a three pounder right there sick but I just had a fish on the jig first cast so that was pretty cool so yeah you can pick up pretty much all the lures I'm gonna be using today guys at oh I got a fish oh no I had him I lost him I lost him guys this jig is getting bit that's awesome there's a oh my god there's like a seven pound bass right there there is a giant bass out here my gosh <laughs> There's like a six, seven pounder right in front of me, guys. Oh my gosh. They're going out deep too. There's summer bass for sure. Sorry, I, I'm all over the place, guys. I'm, I am i don't know what an HD is, but I got 80 of them. That's for sure right now. So, oh man, I really want to get bit again. That was really cool. I'm going to throw into the shade line over here. Summer bass, love that. What did I say, guys? Oh, it's pulling drag, whatever it is. Oh, it's a little bass. Let's go, guys. Fish, I caught a fish. Caught a fish for the video, let's go. Guys, the little bass ate the freaking uh, the uh, Igaraba jig. There we go, guys, sweet. Gotta take a picture, that, that's awesome. That's sick, awesome. I literally called my shot there, guys. I literally said, guys, I'm gonna throw it in the shade line. Summer bass love that. And lo and behold, we got a little buddy right here and he showed us some love. Thanks for biting, buddy. That was so sick, guys. And this jig, I got like to set the hook and everything on that fish. Perfect hook set in the side of the mouth. I have yet to actually like give the catch a fish on this jig, but now that I've tried it and I am in love with this jig, guys, if you really want to get some fish at pressure ponds, tiny jigs apparently are the key. We're going to see if we can catch a couple more fish maybe and uh, go home and edit this video and get it out for you today for you guys. We are going to cast straight back in the same spot because summer bass like to school. So we're going to get right back in there. Guys, I'm going to leave a, dis a link in the description for that jig. If you guys want to get the exact color, the exact um, trailer I was using too, you're going to be able to get that all down in the description below. It was the Jackson Igaraba jig paired with the Jackson, uh, what's it called? I think it's called a Chino, Chino Cori craw. I think that's what it is. It has floating claws, kind of like Z-Man in a way, but not like Z-Man because it has more action than Z-Man. But this could be paired with the Z-Man craw. This could be paired with really anything you really want to set it up with. It's just, you've got to set it up the right way. I mean, you want max probably a two inch bait on it. So you can't use like a speed craw or anything that has a ton of action too because that just won't fit on here so but that was cool caught my first fish i wonder if i'm able to crank out daily videos and catch a fish every single day i doubt it but well the thing is guys with these daily videos oh oh, oh. sorry guys <laughs> thought i felt something 
But uh, with these daily videos, I'm gonna be doing Tackle Tuesdays and Tackle Thursdays. So I'm literally gonna go back to sitting in my room just talking about Tackle. Hope you guys don't mind that. But that's just what I wanna do. There we go. Got another one. Oh, this is a little bigger one. Oh. There we go, guys. Another bass. He choked the Iaraba jig. That is so sick, guys. Stop jumping. Stop jumping. I'm going to shake him to death. I honestly, like I told you guys, I did not expect to catch fish today. There we go, guys. Had to do a little surgery on him. Thanks for biting, buddy. Oh, that is so sick. We've caught two fish on this jig literally in the same spot. They love this jig. That is awesome. If you guys are wanting to test this out for bass, by all means, apparently it works. Ironically enough, I have not ever caught the fish that this rod was intended for on it yet. This was intended for crappie, but I have now caught two bass on it. I've caught a ton of bass on it, actually. But we're gonna see if we can catch some bluegill and crappie on this eventually. I'm just gonna have to go get on a good bite with it. What's up? Hey, you got a license? Yeah. How much do they cost? Uh, I have a lifetime ones, but that one's expensive. I think they cost $17 for fresh water and $17 for the saltwater side. You got a tax What's that? Can you order them? Uh, I think you can get them online, yeah. Alright bro, appreciate it. Yep. Well, it's good that he's asking for a license. That's cool. It's always great to get your licenses, everybody. Uh, if you don't get your licenses, it's not honestly the wisest thing to do because one, you're preemptively choosing not to support wildlife conservation resources. So I always recommend get your licenses, folks. Glad that someone asked. <laughs> it's great. That, it, like at the end of the day, if you don't know, you can always ask somebody. I mean, just find someone like me who's fishing on the side of a pond. All right, guys, we are making our way back to the truck right now. I tried to film like a quick YouTube short TikTok sort of thing, but I could not get another fish to bite. I've been targeting these shade lines that are right there, if you can see in front of me. Those shade lines have been killer for catching little bass, and they have been munching this Igaraba jig. It's a 364 ounce uh, Igaraba jig from Jackson Kwan. You can get it at Bait Finesse Empire. I'll, keep, I'll leave links down in the description down below. If you want to support me, click them. But I think we are probably going to call it might throw a couple more casts, I don't know. But I think I'm gonna call it because today's been tough, uh, it's hot, and I wanna hurry up and get this video done so I can work on the next video for you guys. Like I said, we're gonna try to see if we can pick up the frequency hardcore the next couple weeks here while I'm still looking out for a job. So you guys know how the drill is, but we are going to see what we can do. So far, the Janko rod has done its purpose. So today we have casted uh, a 16th ounce crappy jig. We've casted a 180th ounce mule jig. We've casted a quarter ounce spy bait. We've also casted a 364th ounce uh, jig with probably a pretty weighty trailer on it. I would give this probably a total weight of like two and a half grams, two and a half to three grams ish. But we've tested a lot of different weights on a lot of different setups and we've caught a couple of fish today. So I'm pretty satisfied for what we saw found out today and what we are going to be doing with this rod going forward. I honestly didn't think it was gonna be as great as it was for the jig, but it really was. <laughs> the sensitivity is awesome on this rod. The action is awesome. The way it casts is awesome. Everything about it is great so far, but I'm excited to do some more work with this rod, try out some more things, catch more fish, see what we can do. But I actually need to go out and catch crappy on the crappy rod because literally this rod is meant and designed for crappy, but I have yet to actually catch one on this, so. I've been trying as hard as I can. Haven't seen any yet. Haven't really got any good crappy spots as of lately. So yeah, but point is we've tested and covered all our bases for what we wanted to do with this rod. And I am satisfied. I'm more than satisfied. And I'm hopefully shutting up the haters who say that I didn't do an actual on the water test because I did. But let us get out of here. Let us go get some water in our systems and let's call it a day. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, this journey.